person talking about love, then brother is the preacher. And it seems nobody's interested in learning but the teacher. Momentum gear. Um, Jeff Pearson, our strong man expert, is going to be teaching Josh how to clean an overhead press with an axle. So I guess first off, um, what's special about an axle bar? What's different so, about it than a regular overhead press? There's a couple things that are different about an axle bar. One is, number one, it's thicker. It's a little bit bigger of a bar. Um, you like so, it thicker. I do like it. Isn't it also stiffer? It's, that's what I was going to go with. Aren't they typically two, also they're black also and black. <laughs> Can you bend the bar? You can't bend this bar. Okay. So with a thicker bar, if you're going to do deadlifts with it or any kind of like picking it, like just straight up picking it up off the ground, normal bar is going to have a little bit of give, so it's going to get a little bit of that, start to be able to create a little bit of that uh, momentum to get the weight moving. Okay. With an axle bar, it's so thick, it's not going to bend, so it's just going to sit right there and you've got to actually just lift it from the ground. You're not going to get that give out of the bar, so you're not going to be able to bend the bar. Okay. In comparison to a tub shoulder, how thick is this? Uh, it's easily two to three times. Yeah, thicker. it's easily two to three times. I mean, okay. so and this is a, this axle here is a little bit thicker. I'd say this is probably two and a half inches or so. Um, it's a little bit thicker than the normal axle you would kind of see in a strongman competition. But you do sometimes run in the three inch axle and stuff like that. The you, reason you're going to train with an axle is it's going to work the grip a lot more. And when you're going into cleaning it, you're going to do a thing called continental clean. The big reason you can do a continental clean is because on your regular bar, where the weights go, spin. Okay. So on these bars, on the axle, the ends don't spin, so you can't get that rotation of the weight when you're trying to clean it. Okay. So you're going to have a pause moment, a break in that clean, where you're going to catch it like right above your, right, up, right below your kidneys, like right here. All right. And what can you, you do, do the under, so can you do kind of like the weighted pencil test? Well, where you take the pencil and it hangs under the titty, that's how you know you're working with something good. Can you do a weighted pencil test with the axle where you come up, you let them sit, and it holds, and then you readjust the grip? You can kind of do that. I generally, what I try to do, because I do deal with athletes that are not, don't have a good shelf to put it on. So when you don't have as, when you're horizontally challenged, the, what's going to happen is you're going to need to have a little bit more speed. You're going to have to be quicker off of here. So you don't necessarily want to have the pencil test and sit here for a long time. Okay. You want to touch and go. And what I try to think about is it's a second hit. So I think if I get that first drive through this hit to get it to here and then pop through that second hit to get it to full completion. Okay. okay. I just want to throw this out there since we're not benching. You guys can screw off. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> Alright, so I guess a good follow-up then would be how would you go about teaching this to somebody who's never done it versus uh, somebody who maybe has or has done it wrong? So, the big thing I always do when I'm first teaching somebody how to do a continental clean is instead of trying to teach people to do the switch grip like you're going to do with a more advanced technique, I always teach people to do the double overhand. Okay. Stay with a lighter weight just to try to get that motion down of the continental clean. Because continental clean takes a little bit different motion than your regular clean. Okay. If you're a little bit more experienced to just cleaning it in general, it starts to become a lot harder to get people to pause here because they just want to go all the way into that clean. Yeah. So what I generally do with them is I start making the weight just a little bit heavier than what they can just straight up clean okay. to force them to have to catch in that pause. And then uh, I always still try to teach the double overhand first mm -hmm. and then work on the switch grip because instead of adding in all these moving pieces at the beginning, just start with one motion. So, I mean, that's just what I generally work on, is try to teach them with the double overhand first, and then switch to the, uh, getting more advanced with the switch grip. Okay. So, if, if you don't know, the double overhand is where both hands <laughs> are, are, are over. over. So, <laughs> double overhand. And then the switch grip is your typical... Double reach I did. <laughs> then then the, uh, the switch grip is where one hand is turned under, like you're going to do a deadlift. Okay. Okay, and so when you're doing it that fashion, what I try to do is when I pop it off that first, when I hit my hips, I let go of this hand, so when I catch it, I'm catching it in double overhand, so I can just switch right into that clean. And I'm at the completion of the clean, and then just a regular press overhead. Push, press, push, jerk, however you want, put, split, jerk. Okay. I just said a bunch of words you probably don't know. He knows jerk. He knows jerk. So, 
And the two different ways, first of all, you kind of, a lot of axles will have an actual marking center. I haven't done any yet. I'm going to guess show you where the middle of the bar is. So this one you're going to kind of have to guesstimate, just kind of make sure you're right in the middle of the bar. Then what you want to do, just get that double overhand grip, kind of come down like you're going to deadlift it. And from here I'm going to pop it up, pop it off my hips, catch it here, flip it over into that clean, and then from there just press it. Okay? So, I'm here, catch it here, flip it, and then from here I can strict press it, I can push press it, I can push jerk it, or I can split jerk it. You just said split jerk it. So it's, get that double overhand, come here, I'm gonna catch it here, flip it up, and then I can strict press, push press, push jerk, or split jerk. Is there any benefit to one strategy over the other? So each one is gonna require a little bit more coordination, and each one you're gonna be able to lift a little bit more weight. Okay. So the strict press, when I go to strict press it, I get nothing out of my legs, so it requires a lot more shoulder strength. If I push press it, I'm loading up my hips, coming down here, so I fire, so I can get it here with just my drive, and then finish that lockout. The push jerk, I'm gonna drop underneath the bar. Okay. So I start to press it, and then I'm gonna drop down lower, so I don't have to press it as high. And then the sweat jerk is gonna be, if you can do it, the one where you're gonna be able to pick up the most weight, because you're dropping your hips down, so you get underneath the bar without having to lift it as far. Okay. Now I'm completely out of breath. <laughs> I'm gonna pass out. Good double overhand. See, you just went straight in that full clean, which is not necessarily a problem. But just when the weight gets heavy with an axle, it's going to hold you down because of the weight. So try and pull it right, right. up to here. You got to put it on the shelf. Right. Get fat. I've been training for this <laughs> shelf for years. <laughs> there you go. So it's a little bit awkward of a motion, but try to make it a little bit thicker off of here. So think of as you pull it here, just pop it. So I kind of belly bump it up? Right. That's why I like to think of it as a second hip. There you go. Easy. Just like that. Hey, <laughs> how come you're not drinking vigor? That's mine. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Disregard. Because <laughs> I'm all about the will. <laughs> Where's your vigor? <laughs> hold, on. hold on. Hold on. Make a pop it. There it is. Back at the head through. There we go. So try to drag it up your body just a little bit more. You don't want to start with it way out here. You want to be back here with it. Yeah. Just coming up that body. That hurt. Popping that hurt when I hit the shelf. Yeah. I hit it hard. Right. Up the body. There you go. Head through. So what I mean by head through, the cue I'm using the head through, it's when he was getting here, he was starting to be like this on his lockout. What you want to do is think about getting your shoulders to your ears. You're not actually going to get your shoulders to your ears, but think about getting here. Okay. So when you're pressing, you're going to be here, shoot that head through, so you lock out with that head through, so it's in between your arms. So think of trying, and trying to get your shoulders to your ears is going to make it that your arms are going to be a little bit more locked down. Or if you're just thinking, I want to press overhead, you could be like this and be like, I'm pressing overhead. Or if you think I gotta get that shoulder to my ear, it just forces just a little bit more of that push to get that full solid lockout. There we go. Nice. And the problem, is you're right about the getting the pencil, whatever the weighted pencil test. <laughs> um, because if you're watching, what you're starting to do a little bit is if you're catching it on the shelf, you're getting like this. Yeah, that was really fun. And then you're coming up like this. I have the same problem. So what you want, you do want to try to think of get here a little bit more to pop it up. Okay, so you're not, you're not having this and then coming up. You're more here. So you're like here a little bit more and then bringing it up. Okay? All the things that, all the 
the steps are going to be the same, but what I try to do, as I do in all these things, is speed. So if you don't have a good shelf, it's just going to slide right off. You're going to catch it here and it's just going to slide. So what you want to try to do, what I think of, is when you're doing a clean, you want to hit that hip, get that big shrug, drive those elbows up, catch it when you're doing a regular clean. So when I'm doing a continental clean with the switch grip, I think of as soon as it hits this hip, I let go of that left hand, so when I catch it, I'm catching it here in the double overhand and going up to here. That's why I generally don't teach beginners that right away, mm -hmm. because it's just adding in another component that's going to possibly confuse you. And you're going to be thinking about, when am I switching my grip? When do I do this? Yeah. So it's just practice the motion as a double overhand first, then start working on that switch grip. So with the switch grip, you can have one hand behind, one hand in front, and you're just going to bring it up here. And what I do, like I said, is once I hit that hip, I switch that grip. So then I can just bring it up here and press it out. I don't know if I'm coordinated enough for this. I really hope you drop it. Fuck you! There you go. <laughs> just Easy. Be the only one. So it just takes a little bit more coordination to get into it. I missed my second. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, I mean, if you're strong enough to just keep going with it and get it in the full clean, that's fine. Yeah. The problem's gonna be that's not gonna have to even with these clean. weights. These weights spin a little bit, even though the ends don't spin. So you're still gonna get a little bit of rotation out of the weights. If you've got tires on the end, they're not gonna spin on you. Mm -hmm. So if you try to just clean it all the way, it's gonna. It feels really weird. It feels like it just stops because those weights don't spin, so that momentum doesn't move at all. Yeah. So it just comes up, and you're like, why can't I go any farther? That's why we get that pause. So we can make the bar spin. We make those weights spin by getting that pause in the center. So how would you use, like let's say somebody's not specifically training for a strongman, mm -hmm. how would you use uh, an axle overhead press as like maybe just a general strength thing or maybe even as um, just a fun variation as like a bench accessory? I would use it as a, as a bench accessory for just getting that shoulder work. I mean, depending on what your, their goals are. Mm -hmm. If your goal is to, uh, lose fat and tone muscle, <laughs> then... Uh, lose your shelf. Right, right. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that. I mean, you're, then you're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. But if that's your goal, then I would use it just as another fun variation mm -hmm. to just add it in at different points. If you're training to be a power lifter, then I would add it in as a variation to a bench to just add a little bit more accessory, work out a, like a shoulder day, really hit those shoulders a little bit harder. Okay. And I wouldn't necessarily work on the clean as much, just work more on that press that with press. the bigger bar because it's going to challenge grip a little bit more, challenge that stability, challenge holding it in front of you and just building up that front delt and that chest, the upper chest just a little bit more okay. for making you a better bencher. So I've also always found, because I'm, I'm horrible at cleans and I, I can't power clean to save my yeah. life. I've found, and it could just be because I've done it wrong, but I've found that the axle is a little bit or a lot bit less technical. Yeah. Um, it lets me also kind of train that movement, still get some explosion and actually get some solid overhead work in without necessarily having to have it be so technical as doing exactly. an actual Olympic lift. Um, would that be another good It would be another sense? good point. You know, I mean, that's the same with a lot of the strongman stuff. I mean, if you do strongman competitions, it's less how technical you are lifting the stuff and more you either picked it up or you didn't. Yeah. So it becomes a lot more, less, it becomes a lot more objective of judging mm -hmm. rather than the subjective of, well, you didn't dip just low enough on your squat yeah. or whatever. It's exactly like you either picked it up or you didn't. And I feel that using an axle is good for that because it challenges the grip, challenges, you know, builds up all the clean stuff without having that narrower bar. So for a lot of people, it's easier to get it to clean up. Yeah, that's what I've kind of always found because I can bring it up into position and I not have to necessarily worry about, you know, the first part of the pull. I can't really dip under the bar right. that quickly or well. Um, so I've, you know, clocked myself in the face trying to power clean before. Well, and I know for me, the Continental Clean catching it here is a lot easier for me than trying to be like, okay, here we go. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Okay. So, so the big thing that I forgot to mention when it comes to doing the Continental Clean, do not do a Continental Clean with a regular bar. You only want to do the continental clean with an axle. If you start to do it with that regular bar, because of how your grip is, it can catch too much and it can start to pull, it can tear on your biceps too much and you can tear your biceps. When it comes to gear for doing my axle cleans, I like to use, these are just the Hogan wraps from, uh, Slingshot, or from Slingshot. And I like to use these because they give a, get, have a little bit more give to them. 
so I can get my hands to switch and rotate around as I'm doing those cleans. When, for sh like shoes, you can kind of wear whatever. I like to generally, if I'm going heavy, I'll wear an Olympic shoe so I can get just a little bit extra of a stable platform. I personally don't wear a belt because you can get hit in a competition if it rests on that belt. So when I'm doing axle, most of the time axles for reps too, and having that belt just can wear me out and make me a little bit more tired than not having a belt and I can't breathe as easily. So that's basically what I think about the axle and kind of gear. All right, so Jeff just showed us how to clean press with the axle bar. All right, these are the type of things you can expect from uh, Chalk Talk. Check us out, chalktalk.tv, or check us out on YouTube, Chalk Talk. If you have a lift that you want rescued, Submit it on Facebook. Let us know if you need help with something or you have some guy at your gym that doesn't know what he's doing and you want us to make fun of him and show him how to do it right. Send your videos in. Should we do, should we do this? We should finger gun. Yeah. Everybody should. Suck it. <laughs>